At the age of 15, I found out that my mom had this rare neurological disease known as Huntington's disease. But the prior years knowing this, my mom unfortunately was misdiagnosed and was told she had bipolar disorder, major depression. We noticed she had poor balance and wobbly movements. We had neighbors who thought that she might have had a drinking problem due to these movements and uh, poor coordination. There were severe mood swings where one minute her and I are talking, everything's fine, and then the next she's angry or depressed or just frustrated. And my family and I knew it had to be more than just bipolar disorder and major depression. And after many evaluations, doctor visits, that's when we found out my mom had uh, Huntington's disease. So what is Huntington's disease, which is also known as HD? It's, as mentioned, a rare neurological genetic disease. It slowly deteriorates a person's physical and cognitive abilities. And it's like having ALS, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's all into one disease. Now the worst part about it is that there's no cure. And my mom battled this for 17 years. And all I could do was simply just watch her slowly get worse and worse each day. Five years after finding out that my mom had the disease, I decided also to get tested for it and found out I tested positive for HD, knowing that one day I may end up just like my mom. It's one of the most difficult decisions I had to make or any, I guess, young person would have to make is whether or not to decide what your fate holds and to understand the complexity of a rare disease within a family. Because for me, growing up, yes, I was frustrated, I was upset because I didn't truly understand why my mom was acting how she was. And even once learning about Huntington's disease, I was upset that it happened to my family, not, you know, not saying it should happen to anyone's family, but just upset at, I guess, the world of dealing with that because I personally felt like I was a parent to my parent. I felt like I had an additional responsibility, an additional role in the household. I had to grow up a lot faster than my friends and no one truly understood what I had to go through on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition, I felt like I had to, I was grieving, not just once, but twice. So once was when my mom was diagnosed with the disease and losing her to the disease. And then the second time when she passed away three years ago um, in March of 2015 after battling that 17 year battle with it. So after testing, I knew I had a few options. One was just to kind of dwell on the disease and not really do anything about it. Or two was to you know, get involved and use my results as motivation to fight back and not give up. And luckily I, I chose the latter and haven't looked back. And the reason why I think I, I was also brought here is to kind of understand that we all are in this together. It's, it's important to work in collaboration. As Patricia mentioned, I actually had the uh, opportunity to speak with Abby Myers and to hear about all the work she has done for the rare disease space, for NORD, and especially for the Orphan Drug Act has been amazing. But it didn't just take her, it took a whole army of people to, to make the changes that we need in society and within the rare disease community. And as mentioned before, there are over 700 orphan approvals, but I think we, we can't stop there. We have to continue fighting. We have to continue working because, as mentioned, there's over 7,000 rare diseases. And a lot of them, even if they're ultra rare, they're still just as important as those 40%, um, I guess, approvals that happen in, in rare disease cancers. And so I'm here to explain that even with Huntington's disease, not having care and, and not having as much treatment as I would hope, it's not just about Huntington's disease, it's about all rare diseases and how we can continue to 
figure out those next steps and collaborating to find additional funding or additional ways to provide support and resources not just to you know the patients and families but also to pharma companies and the industry side as well as the FDA and everyone every party that's going to be involved so that we can one day look back on this day or look back you know again maybe another 20 years from now and saying that we've come a long way but we have to keep moving and let's you know push that 700 maybe to a thousand let's push that approval rate even higher and let's continue to have that important dialogue and to connect with each other and realize that we're not alone in this fight you know unfortunately I felt like that a lot I feel like a lot of us can relate to that where we feel alone we feel isolated but then when we connect with one another we realize that we're in this together and the more we work as a team versus individuals the more success and accomplishments we can make in the community thank you